Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I have a little mini crock pot here with some beef fat in here coming up to temperature. And what we're going to be making today is something called fixin' wax. And the first time I ever heard of it or saw it was on a video Dave Canterbury did. And uh, he basically used it on, on everything. He had it in his pack and he would take it out, he'd put it on his axe handle, he'd put it on his butt stock of a shotgun, he'd actually put it on the metal of the shotgun, he'd put it on the metal of the, um, you know, the axe head, uh, or axe bit, whichever you want to call it, and uh, he pretty much used it to fix anything, so I guess that's where the term fixing wax came up. I don't know who invented it, I don't know, you know, how long it's been used, but it's been used for quite, quite some time. And um, if you make it out of fresh fat um, and you render the fat down into a tallow, you could actually eat it. So basically, it's rendered fat. And um, today we're going to use the beef. Um, you can use sheep. You can use pretty much any animal besides um, a hog. If you use a hog, then it's called lard. That has its own place in, in other applications. Um, if you do it from, um, you know, vegetables, then that becomes a shortening, like uh, I think Crisco or something is like a vegetable shortening. So we're going to render down this beef fat into a liquid, and um, the tallow is pretty amazing stuff. They make soap out of it, they make candles out of it, a lot of beauty products contain tallow. Uh, you know, these days it's probably less and less, they probably use more of the vegetable stuff to, to appeal to a broader market. But um, tallow has been used uh, quite a lot in our history. Um, I've even read that they use it as a biofuel. The Air Force was testing it uh, to run some fighter jets, and it was actually successful. So tallow is a pretty cool thing. So basically, there's a ton of recipes for making fix and wax. I've seen it where they add shea butter. I've seen it where they add essential oils and coconut oil and... You know, to me, once you start adding all of that stuff, I actually have a video um, with coconut oil and beeswax, and it doesn't have tallow in it, but it's got all that other stuff. And, you know, to me, you start getting into a bomb when you're doing that or a salve when you're doing that. So we're going to stick with the basic tallow and beeswax, a 50-50 ratio, okay? Um, I'm going to guess that that's probably what they did back in the day, you know, a couple hundred years ago, that they... Just grab some tallow, grab some beeswax, mix it together, and that's what they use. Now, depending on what part of the country that you're in, uh, will depend on how soft this kind of stays. Uh, if you're in the deserts of Arizona, you're probably going to want to add more beeswax because if you don't, it probably will get very, very soft and possibly melt with those temperatures. Um, where I am down south, it gets pretty uh, hot down here too, but I think the 50-50 ratio um, should be fine. Uh, keep it in an airtight container, and uh, it should be fine for quite a long time. So, like I said, I have two, oh, I don't know if I said, but I have two ounces of beef fat in here that's rendering down. And I have two ounces of beeswax. Once this is rendered down, and I make sure I get out any of the uh, little particulates that are left, we'll add the beeswax. So I'm not going to bore you watching this melt, and I'll be back when it's in a liquid state. All right, I'm back. So that slow cooker was doing what it's supposed to do, and it was cooking it very, very slow. So I thought I was taping inside, but I didn't. Basically, what I did was put it into a, um, a non-stick frying pan, very, very low heat, and basically just like you would cook bacon, right? Um, until all the little pieces of fat turn into this crackling, which you could eat if you wanted, and you end up with the tallow. So what I did do is I strained it. I just used a, uh, an old can with an old piece of cotton cloth on top, and I strained it through to get all the little bits and pieces out. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to let this cool off 
so I could weigh it. I didn't weigh the measuring cup before I put the stuff in because I want to make sure I get exactly the same amount of beeswax as I do tallow because um, when I pre-weighed it obviously I'm losing all the weight of this crackling so there's definitely going to be less of the tallow than the beeswax from when I originally started. So I'm going to let this firm up a little bit until I can weigh it and then um, I'll weigh it up and we'll uh, melt the two together. All right, so our tallow is cooled down. I did a little bit extra to make sure I have enough. So let's weigh this up. Scale's not on. Two point one ounces. Two point two. That's good. Put that aside. Let's give our wax. Two ounces of wax. All right, let's get this scale out of the way. We're going to go back to the slow cooker. It, it melts wax great, so we'll put out two ounces of beeswax. And out two point, whatever that was, 2.1, 2.2 of tallow in there. I'll leave a couple smears on there should probably make it too exactly now I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna keep my eye on it and I'm gonna stir it up for a little bit and I'll bring you back when it's all melted all right we got it all melted together now there's a couple different things you can do if you want it like a bar um, so that you could rub it on stuff you could get yourself a little Altoids tin uh, line it with some wax paper and pour it in there and then when it dries you could take it out um, you could put it in, you know, a little jar, and then you could um, double boil this jar. These mason jars are, are fine for that heat, and then you could get it out that way. Or you could do like I'm going to do, and I'm just going to put it in one of these little tins. So to make it easy on myself, I got this little measuring cup. I'm not sure how this is going to pour out of here. Pour it in there. Get this out of the way. Got a little floaty. That up. Another little speck. All right. So now we just need to let that dry. Or well, not dry, but so get solidified. I'll pour the rest in here. As you can see, it cools off pretty quick. So again, the uses for this is um, pretty much endless. You could put it, like I said, on, on metal. You could put it on wood. You could put it on um, canvas if you have canvas that you need to waterproof. Um, you can put this on your boots. I mean, this, you know, this specific products for each thing, but it, it's nice to have something like this that you made yourself. Um, and... Uh, that's why they call it fixing wax. It fixes lots of stuff. All right, so we're gonna let this cool off, and then once it's cooled off, I'll show you the consistency, and um, we'll wrap this up. All right, solidified pretty good, as you can see. It's just like a, um, basically like a, a softer beeswax. Got a pleasant smell. And now you can use it for whatever you want. Like here I have a, a little uh, colonial hatchet. You can take this, rub it on your fingers, protect the metal. You can take this, 
put it onto the wood. You can use it on your skin if you had a little rough spot on your skin or something. Like I said, there's so many uses for it. Well, there you go. That's how I do stuff. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you the next time. Have a great day, everyone.